this episode. Application Specialist Chris Batten gives a detailed refresher on water jet orifice and nozzle maintenance. If you need to change an orifice or a nozzle, let's go over that in our Apex 60 configuration. I went ahead and put the machine in e-stop so that I could just manually turn this to have better access. Using a 13 16 wrench and a one inch wrench, before we get going, it is very important that your pump is off and that you've ensured that you have zero pressure on your lines. So following that, we'll loosen this connection. Okay. With some manipulation, this should just come right off. Should. The high pressure line's putting a little bit of torque on it, so I'm trying to match its pull. Like so. We will need to remove the abrasive inlet hose and nut. I'm trying not to lose the washer, the O-ring rather. You'll notice I have something down below in case I actually drop something. Just gonna remove our splash guard. There's an O-ring down here that we'll need to remove. So it's easiest just to remove the nozzle nut first to remove the O-ring. Now to remove the cutting head, we need a five millimeter wrench. You'll take your five millimeter wrench and just loosen this one just a little bit. Now this should just pull right out. With these parts, let's go over to the table. Take them apart. Now that we have our parts on this clean surface, we're gonna take everything apart. Usually this gets kind of stuck in here, so I'm just gonna tap it on something lightly, because it is brittle, it will shatter, to get it off. So here we have our nozzle, or call it, our nozzle nut, and then the O-ring for the nozzle nut. Now we take our abrasive body here, and remove our abrasive inlet. Now by tapping this, you'll get the mixing chamber and the orifice out as well. Let me clean some of this stuff off. I want to make sure we don't have any abrasive where we're going to make water sealing connections. So to replace the orifice, you would basically need to take it down to this point anyways. You'll want to make sure everything is clean before reassembling it. Feel free to use an alcohol-based cleaner if you'd like, and maybe a cotton swab or two, just to ensure you got all the abrasive out of here and everything's ready to go back together. Our mixing chamber lines up with our abrasive inlet. So as the abrasive comes in, it mixes from the water and comes out into the nozzle. It is important that these two meet up perfectly to reduce excessive turbulence. Before putting our abrasive inlet back on, we're gonna get just a little bit of blue goop on here and if you get too much, you're gonna wipe, you're gonna wanna wipe off the end. We don't want blue goop adhering the abrasives to it. So just a just a little bit'll do. Okay. With that hand tight, we're gonna go ahead and put it back on the on the cutting head. I'm gonna bring our blue goop with us. Let me arrange this so we can see this better. The flat side sets into this little groove here. So when you set this in place, let me turn it off to the side. You'll notice it doesn't set all the way in. And then when we straighten it up, 
it sets all the way down. It's very important to maintain alignment that we, we ensure that this is pressed all the way in place. And then we give that a little snug. Now let me get a little bit of blue goop on the bottom of our swivel adapter and a little bit on the threads of the swivel adapter. The first thread being the most important one. And we'll get this back together hand tight. If you're having a hard time with this, feel free to loosen either of these two connections here to give yourself some more play. So once we get this set in place, I'm gonna take my wrenches and get it a little tighter. And this will end up being tightened to around 30 to 50 foot pounds in the end. I like to put my elbow around the actuator to keep it from moving, to help immobilize it. Now, let's put on our nozzle nut and nozzle. All right, we'll grab our nozzle and our collet, leave it towards the tip, get it started in the nozzle nut, grab our O-ring, Add a little bit of blue goop over here. Sometimes it's just easier to use your fingers. And we'll get this in here. I'm pushing on the bottom of the nozzle until it gets snug. And then I'm gonna hand tighten this. Not just a little hand tight, right? Like pretty tight. And then the O-ring just helps keep abrasive from getting behind the nozzle nut. Since we're here, I'll put my splash guard back on. And then the last couple things I'll do is tighten the abrasive inlet. Using a 15 16 wrench, maybe. So I tightened our abrasive inlet with a 15 16 wrench. And I'm not gonna connect our abrasive line quite yet. I wanna run through the, the purging process to make sure we have all the air out of the line before we, we run a program or a part. We're not so much worried about the air, we're worried about the water following the air, hammering our, our orifice. So with that in mind, I'm gonna get that close to where it needs to be. I'm gonna release my e-stop, clear my software e-stop. I do need to put my doors up to turn my outputs on at this point. I'm going to jog the cutting head away from me. Lower it near the water so we're not so loud. I'm here to head one and manually turn the water on. We want the, we want the on off valve to be open and ready so that no pressure builds up behind the orifice and water and air seamlessly purge. So let's over, head over to the pump. Water on. I'm gonna turn the pump on in low pressure.
to simply come under the high pressure line. You should have a little bit of slack here. Push it back into the nozzle nut and then tighten it down finger tight. We don't want any air getting into here. If air can get in there, water can get in there. And if water gets in there, you have a clump of abrasive in your way. So that's it. Thanks for joining us on this journey.